Good morning, children. Today, in order to keep up with the yearly tradition we set up to give you an authentic French recipe, we are going to make la quiche. Now I know what you're thinking. You've heard it before. Real men do not eat la quiche. And that's okay. You don't have to eat la quiche. You can just make la quiche and have your girlfriend eat it. Here we go. Let me give you the list of ingredients. You're going to need some eggs because that's the principal ingredient. Couple bowls, whisk, stuff to measure, stuff to measure liquids. You need nutmeg, do not skimp on the nutmeg. And of course, a bottle of white wine and assorted glass. Now, I know a lot of people who insist on making quiche with red wine. I'm no longer friends with those people. Also, it seems that some unscrupulous wine merchant felt it was okay to sell me a wine with screw cap. I think that's in very bad taste. We shall see what happens. The wine, of course, needs to breathe for the recipe. To be able to achieve the magic of la quiche, I need a few more ingredients that are sleeping in the fridge at this moment. Bacon, lots and lots of cream, milk, oh, and cheese. Can't have too much cheese. The first thing to do is to cut the bacon in small cubes. They are called lardons, which means small bacon, if you will. For those of you who live in places where the bacon comes only in very, very thin strips made of 98% fat, this is what bacon is supposed to look like. At this point, it's a good idea to preheat the oven, especially if you have an electric oven like I do that takes eight and a half hours to get the temperature. The temperature you're looking for is 250 degrees Celsius. Now, I personally have given up on Fahrenheit degrees, but it seems that the entire nation is still hanging on to that old system. So let's get a conversion going. Yo, 250 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit. 250 degrees Celsius is 482 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, I knew that, 482, let's go. That was a lot of work, we deserve compensation. Cheers. Now, while the oven heats up, I propose we pan the bacon a little bit, just to give it a little more flavor. I've seen people put grease inside a pan that they're gonna fry bacon with. Not sure I see the point of that. In the meantime, we're gonna make the quiche machine, otherwise known as appareil à quiche. Sounds complicated, it's not. For each appareil à quiche, you need three eggs. Then, that's where the other ingredients come in. You need 30 centiliters of cream. Now, I won't bore you with the conversion. It's about this much, the whole thing. And you also need about as much of milk. 300 milliliters, which is 30 centiliters, which is many other things to many people. Et voilà. Now, this is a crucial part of the recipe where you realize that you've taken a container that is way too small for what you're trying to do and you're gonna have to change it to a bigger container. It never fails to happen. And to celebrate this moment, it's always a good idea to have a bit of wine. Now the goal is to mix the milk, the egg, and the cream smoothly to make a great appareil à quiche or quiche machine. It's time to season the machine. Since we are making what we call a quiche Lorraine, all you need is nutmeg, pepper, and salt. For the salt, about this much-ish, pepper, somewhere around here. And for the nutmeg, I'd say about a truckload. A truckload is a little less than a boatload, but more than a carload. This is kind of a small truckload. And then you mix again. I can clearly hear the bacon complaining. Let's go check it out. Ah, it's fine, Trade off. Now all this stuff is gonna have to go into some sort of a pie crust. Real men make their dough from scratch, transfer it into a pie pan, bake it and everything. Less real men buy it directly from the store ready made. That's what we're gonna do today. Now, don't be fooled, they tend to give you two, well, sell you two, which gives me an idea. We'll talk about that later. Here's a crucial moment where you actually make the actual la quiche. And all you have to do is take the bacon and put it at the bottom of the pie. Next, you take the quiche machine 
and you uh, do a last twirl if it's been sitting for a while, and you pour it on top. All right. There is no need to fill it all the way to the top, otherwise it's gonna be hell to take it to the oven after. Et voilà. One last thing you need to do is put some cheese on top. What kind of cheese? Good question, thank you for asking. Gruyère, Emmental, Comté, anything that sounds exotic, and that's kind of nutty in flavor. How much cheese? I don't know, as much as you can stand. Oh, what the hell, here we go. Now, I'd like to remind you that what we've done today is gone to the store and buy a ready-made pie crust. Bought three eggs, some bacon, cream, milk, and some cheese, put it all in the crust and put it in the oven. Easier would be painful. So next time you go to a fancy restaurant and they want to charge you $12.95 for a piece of quiche, get the burger. Side note, another great thing that a quiche is great at is saving your butt when you invite your significant other over for dinner and you forget about it. Let me show you. We shall use the second pie crust for this exercise. Now we have the pie crust. We have three eggs left. We have cream, lots of cheese left, and we have some milk left. What are we gonna put in there? Very simple, whatever's in your fridge. Let me show you. What do we have here? Well, we have Smirnoff ice, that's not gonna work. Parmesan, cornichon, no. More eggs, we don't need eggs. Whole chicken, not gonna work. Magda's cupcakes, not gonna work. Ah, two old tomatoes, perfect. Old garlic, perfect. Mm, could use this for something real. Ah, an old half onion, perfect. Old piece of mozzarella, sold. Ooh, basil, yeah, organic too, fantastic. Let's go and mix this up. We're gonna fast forward through most of this because it's gonna get boring otherwise. I'll just stop for the important stuff, tips and tricks. Severe the garlic from the mother thingy. Make sure if there's anything green to remove it, otherwise it makes your quiche bitter. Cheese. Ah, oh, mixed trips. About that size. If you're gonna use tomatoes, especially older, more seasoned tomatoes, make sure you remove the liquidy stuff, otherwise it ruins the quiche. In this case, it seems that one old tomato will be enough. Onions. Onions can be a problem. Us, real men, and less real men do not like to cry. So cutting an onion can make you cry. One of the tricks to get rid of that problem is to cut your onion under water. You just turn the water on, put your cutting board under the water, and you cut it there, and you don't cry. The other trick for real men is to use machinery. That's what I'm gonna do today. You put the thing in, like this, clear. Et voilà, onions without crying. Now, obviously, you're not gonna put the raw onions and garlic in the quiche, so you wanna fry those a little bit so they soften and it tastes good. One more time, with feeling. Same thing, three eggs, bunch of cream, 30 centiliters, you look it up. Bunch of milk, 25, 30 centiliters, you look it up. Mix it up. This bowl is too small. I don't have a big enough bowl for this exercise. Pepper, salt, nutmeg. No, no nutmeg. Nutmeg and basil together are positively disgusting. Let's create some more cheese. How much cheese? I don't know. How much as you can stand? Transfer the onions from the pan into the pie crust. Organize them how you want them. Even it out so that everybody gets a good bite. Next, let's put the machine in the crust. At this point, I'm gonna try and see if I can salvage some of this basil. It's a good idea to mince your basil. All right, final touch. Voilà. To keep things healthy. Mozzarella. It's fun to do it this way. Yeah, I should be fine. Let's put these puppies in the oven. Cooking time for these wonderful quiches is about 30 minutes, which in America is miraculously also 30 minutes. At this point, it's a good idea to clean up the bloody mess you just made. Wow, it's a nice.
To make sure that la quiche is cooked, all you need is a knife and you stab it, pull it out. If the knife comes out clean, you're good to go. Now, it's in good taste to wait a few minutes for la quiche to settle and cool off. It's no fun to burn your tongue on the first bite and ruin all subsequent bites. At this point, I will vacate the premises to make sure I am not tempted to take the first bite that will burn my tongue, and I will tend to extracurricular activities until it's time to eat la quiche. Et voilà!